Hello, guys. So, um, today I have a client interview that is amazing. Probably one of the best this year so far. Not necessarily because of the numbers, but because of what it represents. It represents that you can go from nothing to something, right? So, uh, I have Mohiz's interview. Uh, if you weren't on the webinar a few months ago, then you know that uh, he's uh, an agency owner who's currently running a show from content agency. He's 19 years old and um, you know he went from nothing to something, all from putting in the work and remaining curious enough to learn everything there was to learn about scaling a show from content agency, okay? Uh, I wrote down some notes because it was worth for me to uh, be prepared for this introduction. Um, and in today's video, uh, you're about to learn how a 19 year old went from being broke to running a six figure company in the last five or six months. Mohiz has shown an insane amount of dedication to scaling his company and to becoming really, really great at um, not just getting his clients attention, but also helping them turn that attention into money. He has some of the best case studies out there. and. Uh, Clients are referring him clients left and right, okay? So please watch this interview and find it helpful. Mohiz is gonna start hosting a consulting sessions in our community starting this month. I'm gonna put him on payroll because I believe in him enough that I should be paying him for the fact that, because for me, it's like I wanna support my clients. If I see someone becoming really good, I wanna actually put my money where my mouth is and help them progress faster. If you ever do business with me and I actually end up seeing that you're building something great and I believe in you, I will always so uh, try to show it with my money. So enjoy this video. Bye-bye. All right. So today uh, we have Mohiz, uh, a goat in the short form content slash conversion space. Um, and um, he's, a, he's been a client. How long have you been a client for? It's been since when? Probably. I think I signed up with you guys in late October. Yeah, October. Okay. So, so when November and December for every budget. I love it. Like, I love it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you've been having some pretty good, um, pretty cool results. And you've been, you know, you know, not, not just results for yourself, but results also for your clients. So I thought it would be really great for me to have you uh, on here and, just share your experience, right? Like I told you, I don't really have a pre, like I don't have questions that I've prepared that I want to ask you. So I really want to make this more of a conversation where I'm also curious to know what you've been doing and what has been uh, allowing you to see success uh, faster and uh, well, not necessarily faster, but you've definitely been more consistent, right? So yeah, but before we get started, just present yourself, let people know where you're from, how old you are and uh, what you do. Nice, man. Thank you again for having me again, Serge. Yeah. So obviously my name is Mahiz, uh, from Nigeria. Actually, I was born in Nigeria, raised mm -hmm. there, lived there for 13 years, uh, moved to the UK when I was 13. And, you know, I got interested in this whole make online, make money online space when I was like maybe 16, because my mom, we, we didn't really come from like, you know, a rich place. We were kind of scotting with like aunties and everything when we came through. So I learned how to, you know, freelance when I was like around 17, I was programming because that was the only way I could make money, but I was exchanging a lot of my time for money, even though I was making like a thousand at like 17, which is quite a lot. I was working like 12 hours a day sometimes. So you got to the yeah. point where I was stressed, wasn't really as motivated. And then I came across, I think it was like this whole like monk mode thing from obviously, you know, who then got the course, all that type of stuff. And then from there, just been scaling and I think it came around the July time. I was introduced to you. I go, I reached, I reached to you by, I think, um, I think it was High Sam or something like that. And obviously I learned more about your product. I couldn't afford it back then. I was too broke. And then Hassan actually gave me like some 10 minutes of consulting on the call. Then from there, I, you know, learned about offers. I really learned about appointment setting and all that type of stuff. I ended up actually signing two clients just from that conversation i had with him which was insane and then all the money i had from that i just used that to just reinvest because i was like if i didn't have this call i wouldn't have made this money so i have to put it back into something that's gonna get me more money Sick. and obviously investing in you you know going into the program was a ridiculous amount of value and i just started implementing every single 
thing that you just kept saying like every single call like i'll always be in in those calls just soaking up every single bit of information and just actually yeah. implementing it. I, I think that's what's helped me you know get success as quick as possible so yeah man yeah no congrats yeah you've definitely been um you know because because i have a lot of clients right i see a lot of businesses i see a lot of founders and um and I can definitely tell you're the type that if you get an input, you go ahead straight up and apply it, right? Um, even you know, it's it's like even your own business right now, it's almost like a it's like it's like it has client acquisition that I was D- DNA uh within <laughs> it, right? So yeah, no, let's go. No, a hundred percent. So would you like to just break down your offer? So yeah, so our offer is obviously a short form, but we position it in a different way. That's a lot different to how these agencies are doing it. So we actually help clients sign five to 10 high ticket clients in 60 days or less. We show form content without any sort of organic ad spend or anything like that. And the way that we do it is obviously with a show form mechanism, we figured out how to get the traffic. We know how to get the views because I've constantly even done it myself in the past and made show form before. So we figured that part out, but then what we tried to figure out is how can we get all these views, how we can con- convert them into leads. And from there, we convert them into leads. And then when, once they're leads, how we, we convert them into actual paying clients. And then from there, we have different strategies like webinars, all that type of stuff that obviously convert that attention into actual money in your bank account, essentially, which a lot of short form content agencies haven't figured out how to do, even though it's like tons of material, how to do it, they're still, you know, kind of slacking, but obviously we've implemented that and we've got the results and the case studies to show it. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So, yeah. 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 What kind of, what is a good, what's an example of a case study that you've had, you've done for your clients? I know you've, you got pretty good results for, um, I know you've been getting like even referrals from your current clients. Uh, just yeah. you know, sending you there you, you're not even doing much you're just people are sending your clients because you're you're good yeah one of our clients actually gave us like four referrals actually so I, i'm still wow. taking the so yeah i have another call with him like one of the referrals tomorrow which is it was a 5k verbal but obviously it's a verbal so i'm not gonna say it yet but it's just pretty yeah. much potentially closed and yeah one of the results i helped him get i helped him get ten thousand dollars closed from his webinar that we did in like a very short notice and other clients as well too. I've had a client just from the lead magnet strategy alone. He's added like around 4,000 pounds in MR just from the lead magnet itself. And I've also had another client that we didn't even have the lead magnet strategies, but just the consulting we gave to her in place helped her close at least $6,000 in just like, just coaching sales. Like she's not even like, you know, doing anything. It's just coaching for them, like a 5K mm-hmm. client just like that. So once I've seen these strategies, it's every single time when a client wins, I just kind of try to integrate into my offer. I'm just like, okay, I figured this out. Let me just add this to my offer essentially. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, how has been, uh, what has been more fun? Has it been making money or has it been dialing in your fulfillment and getting clients results and actually having that little, you know, that little extra comp- boost in confidence of knowing that even the things you're selling, you actually can deliver on. 100%. It's, it's definitely the fulfillment side of things. It's just kind of exciting to be honest, because you get to you get to solve problems. And I, I think this is where a lot of people, a lot of agency owners, they don't get to experience this because they they solve for one problem. But what happens is that clients end up having different problems. Because when I started out, I obviously didn't have this lead magnet stuff in there. But a client came to me, I was like, oh, how are we going to get leads from this? I'm like, okay, how is Serge getting his leads? Oh, he has this free thing. Let me see how I could implement this in my offer and then I implement it. So it's like you're always constantly solving problems. And I just like it. It's like, you know, it gets me excited. I remember one of your videos that really resonated with me was like, you should be excited when you get problems, man. Like you, you need to get happy because it gives you an opportunity to sell it and make a ton of money. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, problems is every time you're going through a rough, patch or a rough moment just know that lower dealing with something that's really hard it's like it's like a it's like the price to being able to price 100 percent, man that pain, me. right <laughs> so uh no yeah never never shy away from problems and that's why for me it's like of course you know a lot of people think that when you're in a certain position just because you're making a shit ton of money that you're not dealing with problems but it, that's not the case it's like problems never stop like they actually get more annoying and more stressful the higher you go right um cool and uh so yeah so right now where are you at revenue wise because you know uh, mrr wise so this month was 
9.5, which I think is going to be 10.5. Okay. I don't know how to say 10,000. 10,000, I don't yeah. know how to say like English, $10,000 essentially. And yeah. it's obviously going to be a bit more if this referral client pays. So I think we're pretty much going to be at $15,000, which is mm -hmm. crazy to be honest. So yeah. Yeah. How old are you now? I'm 19 actually. So yeah. That is insane. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I'd be like, because I'm turning 25, right? I'm like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. Like, I wonder what I, what I would be doing if I started making six figures at like 19 yeah it's crazy to be honest like even sometimes i'm like yeah this type of it's just it's surreal sometimes but at the same time you know you always have to be grateful for what you have because you know I, I didn't come from you know all these riches and all that type of stuff so when i do get any sort of money it's like i i'm just like you know i, I gotta make more than what i have right now man you gotta stay alone yeah. um, uh, is it humility gotta, or something yeah 100%. yeah you gotta you gotta you gotta stay you gotta stay when you win, you, you just got to want to win more, right? Uh, but I, I didn't know you came to to London, to UK when you were 13, because that's when I also moved to Canada. I was uh, yeah. the same age. Similar, a similar story. Yeah. Like, how was the culture shift for you, man? Was it huge? Like, coming from Rwanda to mm, uh, Canada? Not, not too much, because, I mean, um, not really, because I spoke French, I spoke English, and school wasn't not that hard. And, um, uh, and it's pretty diverse here, right? It's not just like just, just like it's mm -hmm. not like a just a white people place. It's like no, there's all these cultures and ethnicities. So uh, I didn't, I didn't, I actually just went straight to high school and I made friends and it was like, hey, let's go, right? So I didn't, nice. didn't, <laughs> I didn't have, uh, I didn't have much, much, uh, much trouble like um, getting used to the to being here, but because I was excited for it, right? I think a lot of people don't know this, but like when you're in, in Africa and you watch these movies and maybe you're, you know, you're seeing things like, uh, I don't know, maybe something like high school music, musical. Is it, what is the, yeah, what high is school the musical? Yeah. 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 High school musical so, three or something. so you're saying that you're like, Oh man, if I was in high school and I would be in, in, in these countries, I would probably be yeah. having a good time. And I yeah. was excited. I was excited to, to move to Canada. Cause I was like, Oh fuck. Yeah. This experience is going to be really sick going to school um and uh it didn't end up being in a movie being a, like in a movie but it was definitely a movie i think high school was really good um but uh no it was it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't hard to kind of like be good nice, um man. yeah how how is how is your mom feeling have you told her now that you're you're running yeah. a company that you're a founder and that you're <laughs> balling <laughs> i told her she doesn't have to take your groceries anymore so that was good wow <laughs> but yeah wow. it's it you know it's, it's huge to be honest because she did so much for us when she came to the uk because she came by herself like our, our father actually didn't have enough money to come so he just sent all of us and my siblings wow. and he just he couldn't come by himself so my mom's been with us for at least six years by herself and she's been the one constantly providing for us so to see her me being saying like you know we're trying to buy food and i'm like hey mom i got this and if she had a new phone i was like hey mom i got this I, I got it for her it's like it's an insane feeling man like i've never felt anything like that to be able to you know afford the things that you've been yeah. looking at like stores and all that type of stuff it's crazy man so yeah yeah that's what i'd be telling people like get rich fast man Trust and me, the, man. and and it's and it's you know like if you did that if you told your mom hey mom take don't take care of groceries at like 25 28 or 30 it's yeah. like okay whatever bro like fuck like <laughs> that doesn't yeah. mean shit but like i'm 19 yeah it's fucking that's like g shit like congrats man like you know i'm super proud of you right Appreciate um, them. I, I haven't this i haven't i haven't offered to pay for groceries yet <laughs> 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 i don't want them driving driving me broke you know but um <laughs> but no <laughs> no man that's super good and that's why for me i love success because i know that it creates so many good memories it creates so many good moments for for the people that we love right like i think i of, of course i get happy when i make money but but i get even happier when i take care and take like just show just show a sign of of the appreciation that i have for the people that that are in my family or even friends you know like Hundred percent. Like it's those moments where you actually get to to do something, where you actually 100%. get to take care of them, where you get to make them happy. It's like it's worth all the sacrifices. It's worth everything. Like my my dad just turned sixty, 
and uh you know I, I bought him a rolex right i you know and i was like hey man it's time for you to stop 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 feeling like everybody you gotta feel a little bit different from whenever you, you feel step special into you, need, you need a car on your wrist right <laughs> so um, uh, yeah, I bought him the Rolex and I gave it to him. We had like hundreds of people in this venue uh, for his 60th. And, you know, I just told him like, hey, man, like you did all this work. You, um, you know, you know, yes, you've, you've invested in properties. Yes, you have all this money. But uh, I want you to know that the best investment that you've ever made is, 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 you know, in me and my brothers. And this is kind of like a symbol that all the sacrifices and everything that you did was, was worth, worth it, it. right it was worth it. and it's like you can't make that shit up it's fucking feels good and every time i, I see him in a rollie i'll be like yo bro that's me that's me right there and it's fucking good <laughs> it's, it's like fucking that. feels great you know it's selfish 100%. it's it's because but it's because i also feel pro i said almost like i feel better for, for 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 the fact that you know he has it because of me than me than if i would have gotten it for myself right 100 so, percent yeah, no. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's go over some. Uh, so you start with short form, right? And yeah. um, what are the first obstacles that you faced when you so, went into the content stuff? So, yeah, in terms of the content stuff, I think this was around where people were starting to get into it. So the first thing I kind of faced an issue was, was with the client acquisition side of things, essentially, like how I was actually like getting the people on the phone calls. Because previously, like before, I don't think I mentioned it, but before this, I was actually doing an advertising agency. That's how I got my first two clients. But I transitioned because I thought it was a better, obviously, it was a better vehicle to get to where I wanted to be. So I jumped into short form. And then what I realized was that a lot of people are kind of like jumping into it, essentially. And what I thought was, if this client acquisition structure is still the same thing, then I'm not going to be different, essentially. So that was the first problem I faced. And I always like to like look back and reverse engineer stuff. So I looked to myself and I was like, okay, cool. How did I buy from Surge essentially? Because I always, I remember I listened to this book and this book was basically saying that the most people, the people who was the most success, uh, successful are the most hyper attentive. Like they pay attention to like the little list of things. So I, I paid real attention to how I bought from you. Like what made me excited to pay an invoice that much to a person I've never seen in my life. So I was like, okay, well, what was the process? And the process was literally just the content. Like you were making content, like explaining stuff. Content actually helped me. So I thought to myself, okay, why don't I just get in camera and just do that essentially. And instantly I started getting a lot more positive replies essentially. And my average was a lot easier. But there was still a little bit of a more problem because I had to still do a lot of volume. So I thought of making a way where I don't have to do that much work, but still get a lot more return. So I looked into how even I was outreach in the first place, which was the conversational flow. I actually, I remember I had days where I, I looked through that whole conversation flow of how I booked a call where when Hassan reached out to me. I don't know if it was a growth specialist. And I just tried to analyze every single part. I made a whole loom about it, like 30 minutes. I was like, okay, here he said this, this said that. And back then I didn't really understand it that much. But now I look back and I'm just like, this, this stuff is so small. So I just implemented that in my own outreach. And it was so different to what everyone was doing. I just started seeing results a lot quicker. And I was like, holy shit, this is actually like yeah. insane. So yeah, that was the first ever problem I saw. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that's good. That's smart. That's smart. So just to reiterate, you when you started doing client acquisition, when you start trying to start a booking calls, trying to book people on calls so you can sell them, um, you know, you, you realize that like you can't just be like everybody else. So instead, 100%. you you tried to, you looked at someone else who was doing it right, and you looked at our sales process, right? You looked at the content. You looked at the consistency and you started creating content. And then mm -hmm. not only did you didn't just stop there, what you did is you went ahead and looked at the conversation <laughs> flow we used to get yeah. you on a sales call and yeah. you, you broke it down even before you understood, you know, just like the frameworks around that conversation flow. Yeah. And Definitely. you started breaking it down. And today, just to give people context right now, you have a growth team. How big mm -hmm. is your team? There's about three people, the people in my growth team right now. Three people? So, yeah. yeah. Cool. And, you know, recently you shared a video of how you, or the script uh, that you were using to book one or two calls per day for your agency. And mm -hmm. I really liked that, that script that I even actually ended up creating a video about it in the program and asked the yeah. team to share it. So that was really sick. 
Um, so you see, like you, you reverse engineered my process and now you're doing something that I'm not doing. Cause I'm not writing a short form content, but yeah. like when you posted that video, I'm, I have, I'm, I have 30 employees. I'm making all this money. But when I saw you post it, I had the same reaction that you had when you first saw our conversation flow, right? Exactly. I went in and actually broke down your fucking conversation flow. <laughs> so it's almost like, you know, so it's like, you see how, I see like good successful people, success leaves clues. People who are successful do things similarly, right? Like, you it's know, we're kind of like twins. So yeah, it's funny that you did something and then I recently did it for your own <laughs> Yeah, I did the exact same thing. Yeah, I didn't even realize that. That's so small. Right? That's, yeah. that's funny. So yeah, for anybody watching this, it's, regardless of where you're at, it's like there are specific behaviors that make you different from a lot of people, right? And paying attention to what's successful is one of them. I see so many people out there. You literally, I'll literally post 200 videos um, a year on YouTube and some people will watch a video and never do nothing from the things they learn. Like in this, in this, in this, in this, in just the 10, 20 minutes, we've just started talking. We've probably shared one to three, five things that can scale anyone pushing a, a content a conversion offer past six figures, 20K, 30K a month. Right now, a lot of people in, in your position right now, you're, you know, you're getting past six figures. But it's like you could also easily, which I told you, be doing 20K, 30K a month by the end of the next month, right? But it's just that you don't necessarily yet know what that volume of activity looks like, which is probably why you're still taking it slow. Maybe you still have to figure out your fulfillment. But right now, in my opinion, you have something that is easily can do 50K a month, right? But coming back to what I was saying is like a lot of people will watch this video and only a tiny percent, a tiny fraction We'll actually press pause, go back to what you just said, and take notes. Every 100%. five minutes, some people will do it, and others don't, won't. The others that won't, they're the same people who keep asking the same dumb questions. 100%, man. When it's like, given there, right? But yeah, go ahead. 100%, man. Yeah, that's so true. Because every time I see someone doing something better, better than me there's two types of people there's people that get super angry at that type of stuff and they're like oh he's probably like fake or anything like that is a scam and then there's people that are like oh holy shit how is he doing this type of stuff and then there's people that just don't do anything but yeah. i was just kind of one of those people that i would look at something and i'm like how the hell is this working like i would want to understand the process and the whole thing behind it and that was part of the reason why, you know, I studied pretty much everything. Like when I got access to that whole, like, I think you, when I signed up, I got this whole program for like the appointments at the thing. You don't know how many times I watched those hour long videos. So it's like, yeah. it was crazy. Cause, cause like, I just wanted to understand every single bit of detail in every single bit of like, you know, how to get clients, how to get calls, how to close deals, all that type of stuff. So it's the people that, you know, pay attention to those things that usually get successful. But what I find really funny sometimes, and maybe you can shed some light on this, is that how come there's people that have all the information that they need in the world, like they get literally everything on a platter, but they still don't get those type of results, essentially. I haven't been able to put my head around it because there's a lot of people that even have more access to information more than I do. So it's like, I don't really understand some of that type of stuff yeah. like could you explain why that's the case i think i think it's a consistency um having knowledge just doesn't mean shit right so i think it comes from doing something so it's like once you acquire the inputs you have to also have your own put in inputs into the world right so as an example someone uh like let's say i'm, I'm releasing a video on how to the convo how you can leverage search chat and the three dollar an hour setter to book calls um some people will watch a video like that and and just be like oh okay now i know how to book calls right and, but what they will do is they'll go in halfway like I'll, I'll be like hey step one step two step three step five step ten they'll only do up to step three and then stop and not only that they won't not they'll just do 30 percent of what i said they should need to do and now and guess what They'll only do it 30% of the time I said it to do it for. So not only are they not going all in with the inputs, but they're also not going as long as it takes with the length of time that it actually takes for you to actually deserve the success. It's success. So it's a matter of, are you doing it properly? And are you doing it long enough? 
You can have the knowledge. You can have the, I know people smarter than me. I know. Oh my God. I, I, oh Lord. I, there is like, <laughs> there's probably a 5 billion people smarter than I am. Right. <laughs> but the thing for me that I've realized is that scaling a company has nothing to do with how bright you are. It has all to do about how much throughput can you put into that system? 100%. Throughput is not dependent on one person. One person can only do so much. Like even you right now, if you fired your growth team, if you fired your fulfillment team, the most you will ever earn is maybe 10K a month. But if you build an infrastructure that has a big growth team, a big uh, sales team, a big uh, fulfillment team, operations and finance team and all this, then you can push so many people through that system that your worth becomes, well, limitless, right? Hey, real quick, before you finish watching this video, I just wanted to let you know that I have something pretty special for you. If you're currently struggling with your offer, maybe you're facing resistance within your sales calls, or you're struggling to book enough sales calls on your calendar to be able to scale past 50K to 100K a month profit, or maybe you're not really a great closer, or you're struggling to scale your fulfillment, and that's the reason why you can't scale. I'll leave a training down below where I actually broke down everything we did to help five agencies add an extra combined 300K a month in monthly recurring revenue in just 90 days okay i broke everything down and this is probably one of the best trainings that i've ever released if you want to check it out click the link below and get it again i'll let you enjoy your video bye 100%. but most people never get past their own selves in their own lack their own lack of discipline for me I'm, I'm not as disciplined as most people think right a month or so ago i was drinking wine almost every day and maybe i stopped drinking wine almost every day but it's like, did, was that good for necessarily for my business? Not necessarily. But am I still going to drink wine? Yeah, I'm going to drink wine. But guess what? How about I make my business success not about me drinking wine or not? Why has it to be about surge and surge wake up time? No, cool. I'm good. <laughs> I'm chilling. I'm I'm a business builder. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not the, I'm not a, I'm not a, it's, it's not surge, surge.io. It's client acquisition.io, you know, it's not about 100%. me. So, but yeah, 100%. consistency and um, and how, like, how are you actually doing everything you you that is required to do? Hundred percent, and that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so what's so when are when are you gonna hit fifty k per month? Because I, I I mean I know you offer to buy groceries, but you gotta buy <laughs> you gotta buy a home. So it's yeah, it's, I gotta be paying rent now actually. So yeah, fifty yeah, k per month. Like I've given myself the target of doing that. July actually, which is not that far from now. Like I've told myself that I have to get it right there because that's the goal. And I'm building the systems and the people behind it. And what you mentioned to me one time before made a lot more sense where it's like, if you're scaling a company that is kind of labor intensive, which most service-based business are, you kind of need, you don't, it's not all about yourself. Like you can't have I me, mean, he's doing pretty much everything. I can't be doing client acquisition, doing service delivery and all that type of stuff. You almost need two me's if you get what I mean. You need someone that's good at one thing and good at another thing. So I'm in that process of just dialing in like the people I have in my company to be just like better than me in pretty much everything that I can't do and just make them the leaders of what I need to build. So I can just focus on, let's say, for example, client acquisition, making content, all that type of stuff, kind of similar to how you're doing it, essentially. So you don't have to have like this perfect morning routine or whatever people like, you know, try to force down your throat mm -hmm. or something. So, yeah. 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 I think you're probably one, one. I think you're easily one higher away from, from 50k a month. I don't 100%. think you either. So you have to, I, I would suggest you delegate fulfillment before client acquisition. Find someone to run your ops operations and you just take care of marketing and sales. And you should also stop selling. I don't think sales is worth, I mean, you, of course, okay, keep selling, but, um, you, but like eventually remove yourself from it because it's also, you're invested in it. So it's like, sometimes maybe you might not, you may not, you probably not the best closer, right? Yeah. Definitely. So, so you, you, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you're probably the best closer being the founder, but no. Even from experience myself, I know that I wasn't the best closer. Now I was doing 50k a month, closing you know that much every month uh, from closing myself. But I know that I'm not. I'm never going to be as good as someone who just spends every day closing because that's their 100%. thing. 
that's their that's job. their everything so that's their job so like you can't be good you can't be better than someone who spends all day long um you know doing something so that's why i would probably suggest you find a closer and just teach them everything about your your offer and map it out and then just give it to them and just see how much money you start making and not only that but this person is probably going to collect more money from the prospect than you would 100 that's the that's the worst that's the best part about this because like i'll have calls and they could even look at them and be like oh if you said this time i worked and you might not even think about you like well what the hell like i didn't yep. even think about it. so yeah Definitely. Yeah, delegating sales is definitely like one of the most amazing, blissful moment when you start making money without working. It's beautiful. Um, all right, cool, man. So um, what are some of the things that you've, uh, so now that you're booking consistent meetings, like what has been, uh, you know, can you bring us more into the, the, the client acquisition process, the channel you're using? You know, you mentioned, briefly mentioned the conversation flow, maybe briefly describe that. And um, yep. yeah, how how yeah that yeah so yeah so the process obviously it wasn't just a nine day thing where i did one thing and then everything changed obviously there's consistency to it so what i mainly changed was obviously i switched into the conversation flow and now the way that we obviously attack people is that we go to facebook so that's where we came through because i looked at the conversations i was like oh you messaged me on facebook so and then we also use this technique i remember you mentioned in the call where it was something about selling to people who already sold on the offer, like instead of selling to people who don't even know like what the offer is. Like I've had people that have been on calls with that they're like, oh, I didn't know this was video-based content. I was like, why are you on this call then? So it's <laughs> like you want to sell to people that are already sold on the solution. So what I did from there was I looked for groups of influencers that promote making videos essentially and this might be like, you know, a little golden nugget, but there so is- like, This is, uh, wait, 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 hold yeah. up, hold up. Yeah. This is this is that one thing that if you pay yeah. attention to it and you leverage it, six figures yeah. is six figures every sixty days is doable. Trust me, Trust Selling me. to so, yeah. people who've already been sold. But please keep going. Hundred percent, man. So yeah, take note here, guys. So basically, what you want to do is that you want to look for people who are promoting getting like famous online people who the whole business is literally to tell you how to get more views, how to get more traction how to get more eyeballs to your content because these people have already done pretty much like 90 percent of the hard work for you they've converted the people who don't even know about the solution they've converted them they've educated them and now they know the solution is there and it's they're aware of it but the only issue is that the little gap that's going to take them from knowing the solutions to actually experiencing what the solution is is the service essentially if that makes sense and a lot of these influencers that are so huge, they have really bad services. Like they don't serve those type of people. They get all the eyeballs, but they don't have a system or a fulfillment system to actually serve them. So your job now is that now you have a system, you have a really good fulfillment system that can take on any of these people. You just need to attack those people who are already sold in the solution. So what I ended up doing is that I remember I spent like, a, I think one or two days looking at just influencers in my space that are promoting how to get famous on like TikTok, for example, how to edit videos, how to, you know, acquire clients to do video marketing. And you'd mm -hmm. be surprised the amount of Facebook groups that are just based off just video marketing in general. So what I just did is that I just joined those groups seen a couple of people doing two steps of like editing and stuff. And I just noticed that a lot of these people they're selling stuff that's not even helping the clients. They're selling like 10K packages for like five videos or something like that. And I'm out here struggling to sell like 2K packages. And I'm like, wait, what? So I just go into these groups and the profile and everything just sells itself. So they check my content and they're like, oh my God, let's hop on a call. Like I've seen what you do, let's hop on a call. Like my first initial message is like, hey, uh, I'll be like, hey, are you making video-based content about XYZ? And they're like, I just checked out your profile, see what you do, let's hop on a call. Like I didn't wow. even have to edit anything. Like it's been that insane because these people are so primed to just video-based content that you don't even have to sell them. They just look at your profile, they see what you do and they're like, yeah, I'm interested. Like it's mm. crazy to be honest. Like I probably get like the the least amount of people that say like, um, I'm not interested in something because the, because the people we're messaging is such high quality essentially. So I get them on the call, they see the process and it's where they're just based on if they can afford it or not essentially. And most of the time they're in a position to be able to do it because they know they need to be making videos and all that type of stuff. So yeah, that's, that's kind sick. of like- That's sick, project. that's sick. Wow. For a second there, I got excited from you just explaining <laughs> everything because, wow. Thank and you, you know what? And it actually pissing me off that you're just making 10k a month. Cuz cuz <laughs> I just cuz I don't get it. I'm like, bro, everything yeah. you just explained 
it's it's it can be scaled to like 10k a day like i don't know i don't know what you're waiting for it to scale it but bro you got something here bro and you're and you and i can tell that you're fucking good so thank you man like take because okay so this is what i'm about to tell you yeah you have the knowledge you have the process please 10x everything you're doing because bro like i'll be honest with you you get one shot at winning that's how my mindset is you get one shot at it when you get an opportunity to know how to create success what you just explained is you turn nothing into money why would you fucking go to sleep if you know how to turn nothing into money you don't fucking sleep you should be waking up every day and promoting, promoting, promoting. You already know how to find people who are already primed. You already know how to conversate. You already have the content that will convert them. What the fuck are you waiting for at 10K a month? I don't fucking get it. Right? So be, be, have more urgency, bro. Have more fucking urgency. Please. Right? When I made my first 10K a month, I made my next 20K a month the following month. I made 30K a month the following month. And then at some point, I got a point where I was like, okay, shit, this is too, like, I can't really scale. I'm like, how are people making 300 grand? I, I looked at what they're doing and I stopped making 30K a month and I went and built the thing that can sustain 300K a month, right? And 100K a month was, was in the same year. And then the following year was a half a million dollars a month. So it's like, but I would never have done that if I did not have this thing in me where it's just, I'm just fucking, I have just more urgency. I just want to win today. I don't want to wait. I, I don't want to just be like, hey, okay, cool. Um, I'm doing better than most everybody in my family. No, that's not that. That's not, that's not, you should not be comparing yourself to where you come from. Forget that shit. Forget that you're from Nigeria. Forget that. You, no, now you're an actual business game. The only people you compare yourself to are people making billions of dollars. Not to the fact that, hey, how did your family, how was your family? What was your, their financial situation? That's not, if you compare, if you keep that standard, you're just going to settle for average wins, right? Right now we're going to do some monumental shit. The type of shit that you're going to look back to and be like, fuck man, I did that shit. And when you step in any fucking room, you feel fucking proud, right? 10 a month is great. Taking care of your mom is great, but it's, it's not, it, you're just getting started. You haven't even done shit. You're literally one bad thing away to going back broke. You never want to have that fucking risk. Never, ever be or remain in a position where you're one, you're one thing away from, going, from dying. That's not a business. That's not even a job. That's, like a, just, that's, a, that's a bad decision, right? So you're bright. Now let's go. Let's, let's, let's fucking let's be serious. And let's know that like today is the only day we have. Right, ten k a month should be ten k a week. But anyway, I uh, just want to briefly show them what the, what you just explained. Thank um, you. yeah, no, I got you. So what he just explained is really simple. Find people who are already sold. So as an example, if you're targeting the real estate niche, you would find someone who's uh, already like marketing to digital, uh, no, to to real estate people. So let's say we could find Ryan Serhant. Ryan Serhant sales. Um, like courses, I think. And uh, when he sells a course, maybe he's p promising these people to become seven-figure producers, but this course is not going to turn you into someone who makes a million dollars. Impossible, right? So what you want to do is you want to create a, uh, a service that bridges this new gap. So this was the old gap, 850K in revenue. Now there is a new gap, which is this one. How do you solve it? You solve it by building an amazing fulfillment like Mohiz has done, which takes care of this gap and takes care of and makes it unreasonable for these people who were sold by Ryan Seren as an example, but never actually got the thing they were sold to. Uh, Mohiz or you or whoever is watching this video can just jump in here and actually uh, build a service that bridges this gap, right? So it's all... So, and then when they sell this product, they always get put in a group. So you always have leads forever. But no, that's yeah, good. It's good stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. No. Uh, all right, cool. So um, what's the most amount of meetings you've booked in a week or in a month? 
in a month like right now i think we'll have like this is 25 i think we were 20 25 i think which Sick. is crazy to be honest. so yeah like it's <laughs> consistently five a week which is you know not a lot but like definitely what i can sustain and definitely i will need to you know invest in people that can actually take care of that for me because there is a lot of calls and i'm not the best no, no. yeah you're probably wasting money right there <laughs> yeah if you're so, booking yeah. 25 calls a month and you're you're you know you're not doing a lot more that's probably there's something somewhere either the yeah. prospects are broke or it's just you who's not good at selling but i never really consider people being broke as an as a reason to not sell i think you can always uh, if you have a good offer people will find a way to pay you 100 percent, man that's so true yeah. so yeah. true cool awesome so um now you have, that you've been starting to include a little bit of conversion mechanism, like uh, have you maybe thought of maybe pivoting your pricing process uh, so maybe you can charge on money that you're actually bringing in your clients instead of just charging a retainer? Yeah, I've been actually looking into that because it's so it's almost predictable in a sense the amount that you can bring for them, especially if they do the process why, which is obviously the webinar process. So I've been thinking of just like seeing a way where I can like collect rev share or anything like that because it's so it's so predictable. It's like it almost works too well in a sense that you can obviously like you know consistently help people get clients that way, and obviously people not opposed to it because. It's what yeah. they like doing. It's like, you know, they like talking more about the offer, but more about the business. And it's a lot easier to do that, essentially. So, yeah. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah. I think that would be, that would be really sick. You should start thinking mm -hmm. about it because eventually you can't have, you know, you know that it's complex to, uh, to you, you just, you just keep more getting more and more clients. At some mm -hmm. point, you're just going to need too big of a team. But if you have 10, 20 clients that you bring in six figures for each every month, you can take a good piece of that and you'll be making six figures or more per, year, per month, right? Just on performance, so, yeah. Yeah, so, so start thinking of being, uh, bringing more value to each client, mm -hmm. increasing the standards for the clients that you onboard, and then focus on them. Do not try to focus on like, because a lot of people complain that, oh, agency stuff, it doesn't scale. No, it's, it's not that it doesn't scale. It's just that your pricing is stupid. If you charge, if you only make two grand per client, you're going to need a lot of clients to make money, but you can also do the same thing you're doing for 2K to someone who's making a million dollars, 2 million, 3 million a year, and you can charge them 10 grand instead of 2K. So now you're the same contribution um, that one client is bringing in would have required you to have five clients, right? So it's almost like you're by choosing better clients, you're, you become more leveraged on your time and on your team's time. So uh, I would suggest you ask yourself, hey, how can I make 10K from each client? And nice. answer that question. Once you answer that question, you'll know what you need to do. Yeah. I also like the way that you also make me answer my own questions, to be honest, because I remember back in the day, like even before I got your program, I would message you like this, the, the silliest stuff ever. Like I'll be like, oh, yeah. how'd you do this? How'd you do that? But it's like, it got to the point where you're like, I can't. Because you would know the answer itself, but it's like, it, telling it to me yeah. would be an injustice like you'd want me to actually like yeah figure out yeah i don't like to answer questions because it's like why are you asking this question you know the you know the answer just think about it like because most people this is what this is the difference you know beginners always want like want you to feed them right you know, they want you to cook the food they want you to, to they want you to even digest the food for them but it's like, bro, you're trying to start a business. Like, because <laughs> you're not, you're not, a, you're not a baby, right? You think said. for yourself. You need to learn to think. You need to learn to break down information. You need to learn down to 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 understand things. Because if you don't, then you'll always be relying on others. You'll always be buying, you know, courses left and right. It's like, nah, I don't, I don't want to do that. If you ask me a question and I feel like it's too simple of a question, I'll be like, you figure out the answer, and then you come back to me when you know the answer. But I won't answer for you. I'm not. Yeah, you know, I'm doing you the service. Um, no, man. No, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, I think what we're gonna do is uh, I want I'd like you to break down the the process that you just explained and this and this uh, of like finding people who already have audiences, selling people on important of content, and finding these audiences in the program. If you can do that, and maybe like next month, what we could do, maybe people watching this video. Um, so Moiz, funny enough, he's not even in the main programs. He just got a setter. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what's, that's what's funny. 
Uh, but we launched ACB, which is Agency and Consulting Basics, which is just a program for anybody, you know, who's not necessarily making already like 10, 20K, 20K a month or more, but who's maybe interested in you know, removing themselves from doing outreach, having a clearer offer and just going and starting to win, right? And then dialing in their sales skills and all that good stuff. Um, and, you know, some of the stuff that Mohiz will be creating, I'll be putting it in ACB as well as the main program. But that's that one is just for people who are already making multiple six figures a month. Uh, no, not a month, but a year. Uh, and next month, you can also like start doing some group, 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 like group coaching and just share your, yeah. your insights because I think it would be pretty good if um, uh, if you just shared your experience and I think that would be really good. And for anybody watching this and if you want to come in and actually get to see what Mahiz is doing because he's someone, you know, he's not necessarily making hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, but I know that from his understanding, um, it's something that someone else could run with and easily like start doing crazy numbers, right? Uh, and then you're also doing some, uh, um, you know, we're adding you to most like, you know, like the the partnership uh, for clients who don't necessarily have a good fulfillment. So you can come in and actually help them. So um, yeah, if anybody is interested in, uh, you know, in accessing his process, looking, you know, pulling back the curtain, I mean, I think that would be worth, that would be worth the price of the program just to be able to just see what you're doing. And just, cause you've spent the last five months figuring this shit out. Yeah. By myself, man, 100%. All right. So if someone could just uh, pay a few thousand bucks and just get access to the answers, I think it would be a no-brainer. I mean, this is for people who can make sense of it. We don't we don't necessarily want you to to go in depth in investing in something, but yeah, mm -hmm. I think it would be really sick for people to access it. And yeah, I'll um, yeah, no, this is good, man. This is good. Great, great, great job. Great job. I yeah. appreciate you so much, man. It means a lot to me. Yeah. Thank you. When are you joining the half a mil? of course man like i'm telling myself may let's jump in may bro like oh, might yeah. as well because like I actually like, well i've been getting a lot of excess capital that i've been saving up and that was like my main goal i remember yeah. when i came in i was like damn i need to i need to i need to jump in with the big boys now that's the yeah. big goal, bro. let's go bro saying? let's go yeah make some make some main just just let's get you to 30k by end of like mid mid june let's yeah. get you a good let's get you a good a good uh, person let's remove you from fulfillment and let's just get you marketing and let's help you promote your um because in the new half a mil we will be like coming in and taking care of like even like the weekly marketing right as well as looking at your sales uh so we'll kind of like be revamping everything and kind of like literally like being like a fractional marketing team and sales team uh, every single week reviewing your performance your growth team and performance your what you're focusing on every day Right. Because I think for me, it just does not make sense that you're making this little money right now. I know it's good. You're you're good, but I don't want you to feel fucking good that you, nah, at the current rate. I, I know you <laughs> I know you can I know you can do more. I mean, I know that if I was in your shoes, I'd be doing a billion times more. Not even necessarily from my experience, but I just know that you have something that works. So for me, it's like I don't understand why we're not doing just 10 times as much. So 100%. Yeah, I think the new ham we could we could we could scale like crazy. So, scale, um, yeah. yeah, so yeah, yeah, scale, and then let's also join uh, this summer retreat. Let's go. Let's have let's have a a glass let's of go, wine. And let's celebrate. celebrate <laughs> let's go, man. Yeah. yeah, looking forward to that. Bro. Like you know, it's been a dream, man. Like just watching you from like videos now, actually, potentially even meeting you in person, like from all the work that I've been doing is, is insane, man. Another thing I also yeah. wanted to add as well too, I feel like some people, they actually don't really like put so much value on the coaching calls that you also do weekly, that like you've been consistently doing them weekly. Mm -hmm. And I would say like majority of my insights just came from those things. Like mm -hmm. the amount of information that I've consumed from those things, just in terms of like mindset and in terms of doing things, it's insane because you even stress to yourself. I remember this one time, and I think this was what kind of made me different. You were like, I can't teach you how to be yourself. You said that one time because you were, there was someone like talking about like how something wasn't working and it was like, like nothing was personalized, nothing was that. It was like, I can't teach you how to be you. You have to be your own sort of different way. And once I heard that, that was kind of, I think that was one of the switch that made me just completely revamp pretty much everything I was doing. So yeah, man, like, you know, you should you should put more praise on the causes that you do, man, because you show a lot of golden nuggets that people yeah. just overlook. 
think like they just overlook it or you know they just don't even care so or they never or they never show up it's good but it's, it's okay yeah you, know, you can't again i can't force people to 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 you know it's like we're all we are um, i don't know i don't I can't say that destiny is already written but we all can't we all can't necessarily be billionaires we can't all be nine figure earners we can't all be eight figure earners we can't all be seven figure earners right so 100%. it's almost like there is the you know the Pareto principle just shows up in everything like it doesn't mean a lot of people think that buying something makes them deserving of success but that's not no. the case not how it works man you have to put in the yeah. work you have to you have to pay and then you also have to pay with your time and your attention if you think 100%. that just signing up for a program is going to make you money you're completely crazy you're you're like you're delusional right um but um yeah, no, man. I'm super proud of you. You're doing great things. You're fucking becoming smarter every day. But you also were smart even before because you were fucking learning some, uh, you know, you're doing software stuff. So, um, so I get it. I get why you're you you're going a <laughs> bit deeper with, with that. You you understand stuff and you're actually breaking things down. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, but you also worked for it, right? It's not like someone just came to your home and just started asking you to learn you know like you put in you put in the time you paid the price you paid the price that most people aren't willing to pay therefore you deserve a fucking better better life but most importantly better outcomes and faster outcomes than most people because you paid 100%. the fucking price not only just in time but also in money you've invested in yourself consistent consistently so you know but now you just got to be like hey take this shit personal this is time to actually roll. I don't want you this summer saying you're making multiple twenty k a month. Like, come on, like twenty k a month is 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 is, is like nothing, bro. Like, don't twenty k a month now, nah. fifty k a month minimum, and by the end of the year, fifty k profit every month, right? Take home. So, right, man, that's the goal. That's yeah, the goal. hold myself accountable for that, bro. If, if that's not the case by July, bro, there's something wrong with me. Just, yeah, just slap just, if, you the face, I mean, I, I mean, I'll just kick you out of the community to be honest. You're, <laughs> gonna become, you're gonna become, you're gonna become actually negative impact. You're gonna be <laughs> here, you know, you're gonna have a, you I can't have, I can't have you in my environment if you're making. You know, if you're not taking home 50k profit a month, you know, we can't hang out too much because then, then I'm gonna be like, hey, should we go spend? you know 10k on this on this yacht and then you're going to be like oh but that's that's my monthly revenue i'm like come on bro <laughs> no i can't i can't have you around me if you're if that's the type of you know our objections you're giving me right so if you want to hang around <laughs> if you want to follow if you want to play this game of life and the way we live it uh you got to get your yeah, bag man. up right 100%, man. that's the goal man yeah thank you cool, man. that push it means a lot you need it you need it you need it everybody needs it all right cool man awesome so yeah, we'll probably do a part two of this one um, because I think that it will be a lot better when we do it, when you're actually doing like multiple uh, five figures a month. And then let's just share the lessons you got from the from this moment forward, right? Nice. Yeah, almost like and, a uh, month of thing. Yeah, oh yeah, 100%, 100%. Cool. And then one last thing is, what would you what would you say about the program? And the thing is, you're not even in... You're just in the uh, train deployment center program. So you're not even in ACB. You're not even in. So it's like crazy. But what would you yeah. say about um, just even from what you've from just you working with with us? Like, what's your feedback? And what would you yeah. say to someone uh, who's maybe on the fence? Yeah. Like if anyone's on the fence, like information, strategies, tactics, people aside, like this is like top notch. Like I don't see anything that comes close to it. It's just, it always comes back to the same thing. You pay the price, you got to do the work and you see the results because that's the same thing that just happens every single time. Everyone that wins, it's like they've paid the price to actually do the work, see the results. So mm -hmm. it's almost like you already, you probably watching this right now, you already know in your mind that this is the thing you need. But the only thing that's stopping you is just what's in here. So once you're able to just get out of your own head, get out of your own way and just pull the trigger and just go for it, that's the only time you start to see success. So all I can say to anyone on the fence right now is like, you know it works, man. Just just get out of your own head. Just get out. So yeah. 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 No, man. No. Thank you. Uh, And I mean, for me personally, bro, I'm at a point where I'm like, not everybody can make it. 
right? We'll, we'll, I'll, we'll still be building these products, these services, but the ones who know that they deserve better will always make the decisions, even the hard decisions to get the things that they deserve, right? Uh, but yeah. trying to convince someone just like you are doing, you're not necessarily trying to sell people on content. You're trying to find people who've already been sold on content to help them exactly. actually achieve Right. So for me, it's like, I don't, I wouldn't say that everybody watching this video should work with us. I don't, I don't think that's a good decision. Everybody should not, but the ones who are already sold on their dreams, let's go. Cause I like that. I love, I love me someone who's already been sold on their dreams and the belief is fucking strong. Like then it's so easy to go get after it. But if I have to babysit you and like hold you and have my team spend checking checking in on you like every day week no 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 we, it's, we're past that let's let's figure figure that shit out there is a bunch a bunch of mindset gurus out there watch tony robbins watch a little bit of grant every morning and then <laughs> come, come come and get to work right uh but um no man he's thank you for uh you know spending time with me on this call and uh looking forward to the next call of course man let's get ready bro 50K. let's go let's go All take right. care guys bye-bye you too take Peace. Hey, so just wanted to take a moment to thank you for having watched this video and to remind you of something really, really important. And that is the fact that you deserve more, you deserve better. And most importantly, you owe it to yourself to be great. Okay. I want you to always remember that always, always, and never forget it because it is a thing that has changed my life when I realized, or when I actually just made the decision that I deserved to be great. And it was my duty to become great because not only did my life become better, but everyone's life in my life became better. So find this helpful and keep coming back for more bangers because I won't stop dropping them. Bye-bye.